Hi, this is Reese from Code Consortium, and here with another ANSI C video tutorial. Now I'm going to teach you how to program in ANSI C. This is part one. Uh, there's a couple of things you're going to need first before we can start. I'm just going to bring this up here and show you. The first thing you're going to need is a compiler. The compiler we're going to use is GCC. You can get that from gcc.gnu.org. If you go there, click download and choose the appropriate version for your operating system. If you're running Windows and you want an easier way to install it, you can download Sigwin. And what Sigwin does is gives you a big package of things that you get with Linux and it also makes Windows aware of a lot of Linux functionality so that you can run some Linux software on your Windows environment but you have to compile all of these Linux programs from source because they still need to be native to Windows because Sigwin is not an emulation environment so just need to try to make sure that that's clear first but if you don't know Sigwin and install that it will give you a terminal and some cool utilities and just make sure you go through the installation process and you check uh, that GCC is on the list and it will do all of the complicated stuff for you. Otherwise if you're on the Mac your version of GCC should be on your developer disk so make sure you install your developer tools like I have done and if you're running Linux chances are you've got GCC already installed and if not just go to this website and download it. That's the compiler sorted out and for a text editor if you're running on the Mac, like I am, I highly recommend TextMate. You can go to macromates.com, it's quite good. Uh, if you don't want to use that, because it is a commercial application, you do have to pay money for it, then I highly recommend you use Xcode, which comes with the Mac, and you should find that again on the developer disk. For Windows, please use Notepad++, that's really good. If you like, you could use Microsoft's uh, Visual Studio, however I don't recommend it, because it's more geared towards C++, and also you're not going to be able to make use of the um, built-in compiler, because really you're going to be wanting to use GCC if you want to follow along with these tutorials that I'm putting up. If you're running on Linux, you can always use either Gedit for GNOME, or you can use Kate for either KDE or whatever you like. So that's the precursor to the tools that you're going to need. You should be able to find links to all of these things in the comment section below the video so please make sure you make use of that because it will be really really helpful. So you're going to need to open up your text editor and the terminal like I have uh, and set up a place where we're going to create our project. So I'm just going to change the directory here to my desktop it's just if you're on Linux you do that, if you're on Windows you use uh, you locate the directory where your desktop is and if you want to look at how many files or what files are in your directory uh, on any Unix based system such as Mac or Linux just type LSAL if you're on Windows type DIR so anytime I say directory listing if you're running Windows please make sure you type DIR into the command line uh, the command line you should be using is either CMD or if you want to use the bash that comes with the bash shell that comes with uh, uh, Sigwin then that's also a fantastic option because everything should look more or less the same and you'll get a lot of the same utilities we're using so you should be able to use LSAL if you're not using bash and using CMD then type DIR hope that's not too confusing now here's my text editor so load up your text editor first thing we're going to, want to do is make sure that everything's working correctly so we're going to create a very very simple program first we're going to tell it to include the uh, input output library so that it can talk to the um, command line so we're just going to type include stdio.h this is a standard header the std stands for standard, the io stands for input output and the dot h stands for header so it tells it to include the standard io header into this program Next we're going to type int main and then um, we're going to put a new line, print f, parenthesis, quotes, and then we're going to put hello world and backslash n and I'll explain what all of this does in one moment. First we just want to test that it works. And then after that put return zero and make sure don't forget the semicolon on the end here and the semicolon on the end here going to change this syntax highlight to C. So there we go, it adds a bit of colour. 
so we can see what we're doing. Now I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it as test.c, like so. Save that to my desktop. That's now done. So I'm going to go back to the command line, and now we're going to test that it's there. And there it is, you can see, test.c exists on my desktop. So now we're going to make use of the GCC compiler. So type GCC, then put a space, then put minus O, then a space, and then we're going to type the name of our binary, so I'm just going to put test, then a space, and then we want to specify the file that we're going to compile. So I'm going to put test.c. The fact that it didn't output anything means that it compiled successfully, hopefully. So I'm just going to test that now. Test is the name of the binary that we specified, so I'm going to press enter. There's the output from the program. The program not only compiles successfully, but it works properly. So we know that everything's installed correctly, GCC is working, and everything's fine. Where I've put this minus O here, there are some other things you can put, and I will explain them later on. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check regularly for the next video in the series of NCC tutorials. For further discussion on programming, visit the forum on codeconsortium.com where you can post your questions and advice. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. See you next time.